important skill in algebra is being able to turn a phrase into an expression because once you have an expression you have something you can solve. So this activity is about practicing that skill and sometimes it can be a little confusing. It's important to make sure you know your terminology and even if you need to create diagrams to visualize what's going on to help you understand what process is occurring and the order of the terms. So number one says express the difference between a number and four. Difference means subtraction. If you have a value here and a value here, what's that space in between? That's the difference and you have to subtract to get there. So when it's expressing the difference of a number and four, that and is the clue that that is the order that you present in. So if you have a number and you don't know what its value is, you put in an x, and then it's a subtraction problem, the difference of a number and four. So x minus four is your answer. The number two says express twice the difference between a number and seven. So it's saying it wants to know what twice the difference is. So that's saying you have to subtract first before you multiply and the only way you can do that is if you are using parentheses. So we ignore the twice part and it wants to know the difference between a number and seven. So the difference between a number and seven and then it says twice whatever this value is. So we wrap this up in parentheses and put the two in front. It's we always want to make sure that the number that's being distributed and doing the multiplying goes in front of the parentheses with no operation signs in between. So then if we take a look at number three, it says express six less than twice a number. So before we can have less than something, it's asking us to take six out of something, we have to have another value first to pull that six from. And it's saying pull that six from twice a number. So twice a number just means two times x, and then we need to take six away from whatever that value is. Number four asks us to identify the length of a rectangle, or so the length of a rectangular garden is nine feet less than the width. Write an expression for length and width using just one variable. So this isn't a situation where we want to say length equals w, or I'm sorry, length equals l, width equals w. I think I'm getting that all confused. Anyways, you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, it's it, we have to have one baseline unknown and then create two values off of that one unknown. And it's comparing length in terms of width. So width is going to be x and it's saying the length was 9 less than that. So we needed to take that width and take 9 away from that. So two different values based off of one baseline unknown. Okay. So then question five says, Joe the cat weighs three times more than Lily the Chawini dog. Okay, so it's comparing Joe in terms of Lily. We have a bunch of critters, so we're gonna need to actually create four different expressions. And to start with, it's giving us Joe based on Lily. So Lily has to be our baseline. So Lily is X, and then it says Joe is three times that. So Joe has to be three of Lily's weight, so three X. Then it says Fezzik weighs 20 times more than Lily. So Fezzik is Lily 20 times. And then the last one is George, who weighs two pounds less than Lily. So we're just gonna say G is Lily's weight, and then we take away two pounds from that. So four different values, four different expressions, all off of one baseline. So number six says Jeffrey has $6,000 in two different accounts. Write expressions for the amount in each, being sure to use only one variable. Well, a lot of people tend to go 6,000 divided by two. Well, that would work if we knew that each account had the exact same amount deposited, but we don't know that. So we know though that account one has some balance in it. We don't know what it is, so we put it as x. So that means account two, if 
if there was a total of $6,000 between the two, if I take out account one's amount, the balance then gives me what is an account two. So this is, these are your two expressions. Question seven, Lori saved $4,000 to take a trip uh, to Hawaii for her anniversary and she takes X dollars out for the trip. So how much money is remaining? Well, if she had $4,000, X was deducted from that, so the balance then would say how much she had remaining. Mary owns seven more than twice the number of books that Adam owns. Express the number of books that each person owns. So Mary's value is in terms of Adam's quantity. So Adam has to be our X so that Mary is... Uh, seven more than twice the number that Adam has. So that means before we can have seven more than something, we have to have a starting term. And that was twice Adam's and seven more than that. <clears throat> now, it would solve the same if you put the seven first, but that's not <clears throat> the order that the phrase is expressing. So order does matter just to show you understand the process and what's going on. Number nine, Brad has a pile of dimes and nickels sitting on his desk and he happens to notice that there are three times as many dimes as nickels. So the quantity of nickels or the, the quantity of dimes is being related to the nickels. So that means that nickels is X and dimes is three times that quantity. Then the next one, the next question, question um, for 10, wants us to express how much each of those sets of coins is gonna be worth. So because we don't know the quantity of the nickels, we can't have an answer, but we know how much a nickel is worth. It's worth five cents. Now you don't wanna use five as a whole number because otherwise you'd be saying it's five whole dollars Per nickel and it's not it is 0 0.05 times however many nickels you have so this is just the easiest way you don't need parentheses because there's no organization separation that needs to be done it's just nice and simple now then the quantity of dimes you actually have a couple different things that you can write you know that dimes are worth 10 cents 10 cents multiplied by the quantity of dimes tells you how much that is worth. So you can write it as 0 0.10 times 3x. You could also write this as 0.1 times 3x because the zero is adding no real value, though because it's money, you might you, you would need the second decimal value, so keeping it might be the easiest. The other option is you can go ahead and simplify this. Well, what is 0.10 times three? Well, it's 0.30x. So I've converted it to that. So really either this one or this one um, are your best expressions. And then the last one is that Joel wins the lottery and there's a 45% tax on his lottery winning. So how much does Joe take home? Joel take home? Well, they give us the 45%, but that's not the amount he takes home. That's how much he doesn't get. So how much remains? So if he got all of the lottery winnings, he would get 100%, which is one, right? So then if I have one and I take 45% away, you always have to convert a percent to a decimal. 45% is a decimal is 0.45, okay? So one minus 0.45 leaves us with 0.55. Now, whenever you're dealing with a percent, a percent doesn't make sense when it's by itself. It has to be attached to a variable in order to have meaning because otherwise this is saying Joel is only taking home 55 cents from his lottery winnings, which would be a real bummer uh, and completely not worth of his time. But for ever, however many dollars he gets, how, whatever the size of his lottery winnings is, he gets 55 cents per dollar. So he gets 55% 
of his lottery winnings. Whenever you have of, you know that there's multiplication involved. So have the decimal version of the percentage attached to a, uh, a variable, and you got it.